Welcome to the last video of the evolution unit, which is going to cover how did two species evolve from one and examples of natural selection um, occurring in our world. So first topic is uh, normally when we talk about evolution and natural selection, we talk about starting with one species and over time it slowly changes as traits are favored by natural selection from one species into another. So species A into species B. But the question of the day was how do you ever get new species? How can species A turn into species C and B? So increasing the number of species on the planet. Because without understanding this, all we have is one species changing into two. So the big idea of how you get speciation, which is actually the change of um, one species into two, um, is from, or there has to be some sort of a geographical isolation that happens to a population. So say in the past, a certain population of a species, and species A lives in an area, and this could be over, you know, a hundred uh, miles across. It's, it could be a large distance. And over time, over lots of time, um, maybe there's a mountain range that splits the population into two. So you have some members of population A over here, and some that are geographically isolated on the other side of the mountain. The point is that members on this side of the population cannot go over and reproduce with members on this side of the population. This is the event that actually happens right here in time that causes A on start, to start on the path going into two new species. Other examples of geological isolation or barriers that can be created could be from a river um, that forms through a population. You can have continental drift. Um, you could have uh, lots of kids say earthquakes, a crack in the earthquake, but that's probably not too common. But I mean, I've even heard of examples as small as a road separating a rodent population that's too shy to run across a road. Um, you can have um, a, a, a fish inside of a river getting split by a sandbar and, and other examples. So anything that can physically separate a population into two is going to be um, an example of the beginning of geographical isolation. So then what happens though in the population is you have over time, as in any population, you get random mutations. Let's say within the population you have you know, some new trait that happens on this side of the mountain range. Well now this trait here, um, let's say natural selection favors it, so that means that individual is going to be reproducing more often and it's going to pass that trait down over time. At the same time, on the other side of the mountain, let's say there's somebody born with this new mutation here, random mutation that turns out to be positive. Of course, other mutations are going to happen that aren't positive and the organism die off. But over time, you get natural selection favoring this mutation so that the mutation becomes more common. Um, and then what you have to add into this argument here, besides you know red and blue dots becoming more common as a as a new mutation is over thousands of years you're going to get more and more random mutations that happen equally. The mutation rates the same on either side of the mountain range but whatever one are advantageous over here are going to be selected for by natural selection and they're going to be different from whatever happens over here. So if you give it enough time there's going to be enough genetic changes selected for by natural selection that you'll actually get a new species that is um, unable, even if these mountain ranges, the mountain range eroded away, whoops, I just messed that up, the new species on either side of the mountain range wouldn't be able to reproduce with each other um, if the mountain range wasn't there. So the way ultimately you get this branching of one species into two new species is a geographical barrier that splits up the population and then natural selection selects the better traits on each side over time. Sometimes this process can be accelerated if you actually have, in the case of a mountain range, if you have different environments. On either side of the mountain, um, that can make it happen faster, but ultimately even if it's just across a river, which still would have the same side of the mountain, um, or the same environmental conditions on either side of the river, you still can have natural selection changing over time as the random mutations get accumulated in the population. So the other topic uh, for study in evolution is this idea of since ev evolution of a new species takes too long um, <clears throat> to actually see one species change into another, scientists try to study examples 
that are going on today of how natural selection is influencing organisms to change. Um, and so we talked about three examples, although you can talk about many examples in class that are examples of natural selection occurring in our world. Uh, one example we talked about is the flu virus. Everybody knows that you have to get a flu shot every year, and the reason for that is the flu virus um, is a virus that actually, this is my drawing of a virus, has an ability to mutate a lot. And so what we make the shot against this year, um, by the time this virus reproduces and it's passed person to pe person around the world, um, it's going to have some mutations uh, accumulated in it that's going to make it slightly different than it was when the the year in the year's previous virus. So that this time if you get infected with this flu virus your immune system hasn't been um, protected against it. So what that means is scientists have to come up with another vaccine for this year um, to fight that off. But of course as it gets passed from person to person around the world it's going to mutate in um, some other way so that what was a vaccine that worked against that virus won't work against the next new version of it. So what's happening is nature is selecting the virus, um, uh, the best mutated virus for survival, so it's an example of natural selection going on, and we will continue to have to get flu virus shots um, for the foreseeable future because this virus is one that does like to mutate quite rapidly. Uh, another example of natural selection in our world is pesticide-resistant in insects. When pesticides were still, or when they were first invented, or the first ones that were invented, in the early 1900s, a farmer could spray their crop with this uh, pesticide, which is a chemical that kills bugs. And the corn plants, let's say, would grow really well without very many insects eating them at all. But real quickly, after, say, year one, year two, and year three, and so on, what happened was is the pesticide would kill off all but the most uh, resistant insects to the uh, pesticide each year and the ones that had genetic variations that allowed them to survive, they would reproduce and repopulate the cornfield the next year. Um, and so the pet farmer would spray the pesticide and it kill off most of them. But then you, the third year, you'd have these ones that had the genetic variation that allowed them to survive, reproducing even more. And very, very quickly, within a, a few um, decades, you have to the point where the insects that have survived are all the resistant ones and the pesticides actually don't work that well. So it's an example of natural selection killing off the weak insects and the ones that are genetic resistant coming back and being strong. The last example of natural selection that was discussed in class is antibiotic resistance. Antibiotics are drugs oops, that kill bacteria. And antibiotics um, have been really kind of a miracle drug since they were discovered in the early 1900s. Um, but the story with them in natural selection is the same as the pesticides, the same as the flu virus, it is somebody that's infected with a bacterial infection, say a strep throat or an ear infection, has a bunch of bacteria in them, and the bacteria have genetic variability. Well, you take antibiotics, and the antibiotics are really good at wiping out the vulnerable bacteria, but they leave, let's say those red ones, are the resistant ones. And so the red ones then repopulate in the next person they infect or even in the same person um, so that if you take the drugs again it's harder to kill maybe a few blue survivors. Um, and so over the years since we first discovered antibiotics we have taken these drugs and they have effectively killed off many of the weak bacteria and now a lot of the bacterial infections that people are getting infected with are actually mostly antibiotic resistant bacteria, which means they are resistant to dying from this drug um, and creating a problem that we have today. We've, through natural selection by accident, created a problem for humans in that we've been killing off the weak bacteria as we take antibiotics, curing an uh, bacterial infections, which has been great. But now today, 60 years later since the discovery of antibiotics, many bacterial infections um, can be resistant to one or more drugs and it, maybe it takes a couple of drugs in order to get that antibiotic or get that bacterial infection to subside. Um, and that's it for the evolution unit.